Good afternoon, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the press, members of the Council of the National Bank of Serbia, fellow economists, it is my pleasure to greet you on behalf of the National Bank of Serbia on the occasion of presentation of the November Inflation Report. Before Mr. Hinic uh, gives an overview of the contents of the Inflation Report, I will give a brief overview of the current macroeconomic developments. Since early 2014, inflation has been moving uh, below the lower bound of the target tolerance band, that is below 2 percent. The main uh, contributors uh, are disinflationary effects in terms of low aggregate demand and temporary factors such as falling prices of primary agricultural products and thus uh, low, cost, uh, low uh, cost, uh, push, cost push pressures in food production and the absence of the adjustment of electricity prices. Our previous uh, uh, projections included, uh, included the adjustment of electricity prices, uh, but this was delayed and uh, inflation has been moving uh, below the lower bound of the target tolerance band. In the coming period, we expect that inflation uh, will move uh, below the lower bound of the target tolerance band, and we do not exclude the possibility that in November it will return within the target. Such movements uh, will uh, be present until the second uh, quarter, uh, and uh, from then onwards, inflation will get closer to its target value of 4%. The current account deficit in this year will equal around uh, 6%, and it is at the level of the deficit of the previous year. However, it is somewhat higher than we initially projected. Uh, the uh, main factors contributing uh, to uh, this uh, decline um, was the worsening, that is, the widening of the foreign trade deficit because of the slowdown in the economy of our foreign trade partners and increased energy imports after the May floods. We expect that the current account deficit in, in the next year will move at the level of around 5 percent and a positive contribution to uh, the reduction will come uh, from an increase in exports uh, because of the expected recovery in the euro area and uh, on the back of uh, a reduction in imports because of the announced uh, fiscal consolidation measures. Thank you for your attention and now I would like to pass the floor to Mr. Hinic who will present the November inflation report. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the press and fellow economists, since we last met at the presentation of the August inflation report, inflationary pressures have stayed low. Year-on-year -year inflation continued to move below the lower bound of the target tolerance band and measured 1.8% in October. Under our central projection, which is lower than the one from the August report, by end 2014 and in the first quarter of the next year, inflation is expected to move, continue moving within, below the lower bound of the target tolerance band though it might temporarily return within the target band in November. As of the second quarter next year, we expect to see it trending up, only to return within the target band by mid-2015. Low inflationary pressures are supported by weak aggregate demand, absence of the usual administered price adjustment, low cost push, pre push pressures in the production of food and movements of import prices. Note particularly that the prices of primary agricultural commodities, corn, wheat, wheat and soybeans, as important food production inputs, dropped by around 25% over the last six months. Economic activity slowed down more than expected in the third quarter. On the production side, this was induced primarily by the May flooding, which placed greater strains on mining and energy sectors than initially assessed. On the expenditure side, the fall in economic activity ensued as the recovery in the euro area, that is, our main trade partners, started to lose steam. The same reason flooding and contraction in external demand are behind the temporary slowdown in the reduction of the current account deficit, which should reach some 6% of GDP, the same as last year. 
The expected rise in exports in 2015 should be aided by the recovery of our main trade partners, while the contraction of domestic demand amid fiscal consolidation measure will hold back exports, thus likely leading to the lowering of the deficit below 5% of GDP. Over the past period, international environment witnessed not only an uninterrupted decline in prices of primary agricultural commodities, but also the cheapening of the majority of raw materials in industry. Particularly strong was the drop in crude oil dollar prices, amounting to as much as 30% from mid-year. Increased oil supply and the strengthening of the dollar triggered a fall in oil prices despite the geopolitical tensions. The Ukraine crisis continues to pose a risk to Europe's economic movements. As for the euro area, its growth prospects were revised down. In 2014, its GDP is likely to grow by 0.8% and in 2015 by 1.2%. As the risk of an extended period of low inflation persisted, the European Central Bank lowered its policy rate in September to a new historical minimum of 0.05% and cut further the interest rate on deposit facilities, which was already negative. Furthermore, as of last month, the European Central Bank resorted to additional unconventional liquidity boosting measures. Contrary to the European Central Bank, in its October meeting, the Fed put an end to its program of buying Treasury notes and mortgage-backed securities, and the markets expect to see it embark on key policy rate increases as of mid-next year. Uncertainties in the, in, in the international capital market reflecting the Fed's QE tapering and geopolitical tensions of, over Ukraine brought about somewhat more modest capital inflows and, as a consequence, fuel depreciation pressures in the emerging market economies, Serbia included. As of the third quarter, the depreciation pressures on the dinar have been generated not only by global factors, but also by elevated energy imports and weaker export results, including the delay in the start of application of additional fiscal consolidation measures and structural reforms. From July to October, the National Bank of Serbia intervened in the interbank foreign exchange market by selling 365 million euros net. Consistent with the practice so far, the interventions were aimed at easing excessive short-term volatility of the exchange rate without any intention to influence the exchange rate trend. Though increasing twice in the period observed, by late October, Serbia's risk premium, measured by the Emerging Markets Bond Index, touched almost the same level as in late June, equaling 270 basis points. Currently, Serbia's risk premium stands around 250 basis points. On the expenditure side, the largest negative contribution to this year's GDP will come from household consumption, weighed down by the taken fiscal consolidation measures, and from private investments. Due to the weakening of external demand over the past several months, the contribution of net exports to GDP in 2014 is estimated to be neutral, rather than positive, as expected earlier. Persistently subdued inflationary pressures reflect chiefly low aggregate demand, unusually weak administered price growth, and the absence of major cost push pressures in food production and pressures from import prices. 
Year-on-year -year inflation continued to move below the lower bound of the target tolerance band in the third quarter and was joined from August by core inflation as well. Looking at inflation components, the inflation movements described were mostly due to food prices, which fell amid a drop in international and domestic prices of primary agricultural commodities since May. In addition to this, administered price growth turned out to be rather low compared to the previous years. Namely, in the first 10 months of the year, it measured mere 2.8 percent compared to the 10.4 percent in the same period last year, largely owing to the absence of electricity price adjustment. <laughs> Under our central projection, year on year inflation will stay below the lower bound of the target tolerance band in the current and the coming quarter, possibly re entering the target tolerance band temporarily in November. Based on our estimates, inflation will start rising from the second quarter of 2015 and will return within the target tolerance band of 4 plus minus 1.5 percent around mid-year. In the remainder of the forecast period, inflation is expected to move within the bounds of the target tolerance band. Inflation's return to the target in the course of 2015 will be led primarily by administered prices most of all by electricity prices, which are expected to rise in the second quarter. <coughs> Past depreciation of the dinar will put pressure on the prices of import products, but also on the prices of domestic products, depending on their import content. Still, the intensity of this pressure will depend on the importers and producers' ability to command higher prices against the backdrop of depressed aggregate demand, which remains the key disinflationary factor in the medium term. The upward pressure on import prices in Serbia should be additionally constrained by the rather low inflation in the international environment, notably in the euro area, which is our main foreign trade partner. The risks to the projected inflation path are associated primarily with fiscal movements, administered prices and the impact of developments in the international environment on domestic economic and financial flows and on the prices of primary commodities. Due to uncertainties in the international environment and persistent geopolitical tensions and their possible impact on the country risk premium and the exchange rate, monetary policy is eased at a cautious pace in order to stabilize inflation permanently at low levels. Taking into account the new lower projection of inflation and GDP, the Executive Board of the National Bank of Serbia decided in its last meeting to cut the key policy rate by 50 basis points to 8%. To support credit activity, the Executive Board also lowered the foreign exchange reserve requirements and raised the dinar share of allocations of foreign exchange required reserves. Credit activity remains in the negative zone, even though its real year-on-year -year fall slowed down to 1.8% in September thanks to the subsidized loan program for the corporate sector. Looking ahead, monetary policy easing will depend on the effects of past monetary policy measures, the effects of fiscal consolidation measures and structural reforms, as well as on the assessment of the potential inflationary impact of developments in the international environment. At this point, the international environment is plagued by uncertainties over the effects of normalization of the U.S. monetary policy on the financial markets, further evolution of the geopolitical situation, 
and the pace of recovery of the euro area. Continued consistent implementation of fiscal consolidation and structural reforms is essential in order to increase the resilience of the domestic economy to potential external shocks. At the same time, consistent implementation of fiscal consolidation and structural reforms will help improve foreign investors' perception of Serbia as an investment destination. Agreement with the International Monetary Fund on a new arrangement will stand an additional assurance of the credibility of the Serbian economic policy. Thank you very much for your attention. Daniela Nishevic from Blitz. The question relates to dinar and to whether the arrangement with the IMF will stabilize the exchange rate. We expect uh, that the conclusion of, a, of an arrangement with the IMF will certainly contribute to the stabilization of movements in the FX market, uh, primarily in terms of the verification of the credibility of the government's uh, economic policy, which should uh, contribute to the inflow of FDIs, which should certainly contribute to the stabilization of developments in the FX market. Uh, the stabilization will also be induced uh, by fiscal consolidation measures, which would uh, reduce the aggregate demand impact on uh, reduced imports, which should also contribute to uh, a reduction in depreciation pressures. Gordana Filipovic, Bloomberg, you say that uh, the arrangement with the IMF would, um, uh, would calm down the situation in the FX market. Why have you intervened uh, today and what are the capital outflows because of the transfer of dividends that you were mentioning uh, last week and uh, what is the expected FDI inflow for 2015? Thank you. So the arrangement with the IMF would certainly contribute to a reduction in depreciation pressures. And what is present, what has been present since mid-year are latent uh, depreciation pressures driven by the worsening of macroeconomic performances, primarily in terms of the widening of the foreign trade deficit. And this was induced by the effects of the floods and increased imports of energy products and uh, reduced exports uh, that happened afterwards. We have also seen uh, an outflow of capital through dividends in the third quarter. The outflow through dividends was around uh, 85 uh, million euros in the last quarter. This amount will be uh, higher because of the nature of the decisions of shareholders uh, who uh, concentrate uh, the payment of dividends to majority owners abroad in the last quarter. We expect uh, this amount to be uh, twice higher than in the third quarter. As for the interventions in the uh, FX market, uh, they are not aimed at uh, preventing the weakening of the dinar or halting this process. We aim to uh, prevent excessive um, short-term volatility of the exchange rate, which could uh, uh, trigger capital losses uh, and gains in financial transactions. And what is also important is that when we intervene in the FX market, we also take into account the character of other disinflationary pressures. Uh, for instance, the depreciation recorded in the past period does not jeopardize the main objective, this being uh, price stability. We intervene in order to ensure uh, relative stability in the FX market and to preserve financial stability of our system. 
and consistent with our projections uh, for the next year, as I said, uh, the current account deficit in the next year should equal around uh, 5 percent, and it will be find funded uh, primarily uh, by the FDI inflows, uh, which uh, are projected at around 1.4 billion euros. This. Uh, what dinners did you use for buying for an exchange when capital flew out in respect of dividends? And what is the what is the gain of the National Bank of Serbia from interventions in the foreign exchange market? Uh, my second question would be, could um, we perhaps, through a system of premiums and uh, risk insurance, uh, prevent um, the robbery of these uh, frauds in, in, in banks? Because uh, the rumor is that foreign owned banks are the ones who uh, create problems, whereas in fact state-owned banks uh, made a hole in the budget uh, in the amount of 800 million, million. So could we prevent the hazard of these banks and could we perhaps reward the good banks? the well-performing banks, because as we were able to see, uh, the budget uh, uh, around 3 million to 400 million euros uh, was spent out of the budget for these purposes. When it comes to your first question uh, as to the origin of the dinars for uh, the payment of dividends to foreign owners, these are the dinars that these companies generated uh, through their operations in the domestic market, because all operations are perform all transactions are performed in dinars, and the accumulated profit was used after the shareholders' decision to uh, transfer the profit partially to abroad. So these are the foreign exchange holdings generated by these companies. Uh, so this is not at all um, uh, unusual. Uh, this applies the same, uh, the same applies to financial institutions. They uh, effected transfers of dividend payments abroad, and this is completely legitimate. It's just that uh, our market is uh, shallow, and uh, an increase, uh, one of increase in uh, foreign exchange demand uh, causes significant disruptions to uh, exchange rate stability. Of course, this is done by all companies with majority foreign uh, owners and w who decide to transfer a part of their profit abroad to the majority uh, owners and shareholders. When it comes to the second question regarding the profit of the National Bank of Serbia or, or its loss, in several instances the National Bank of Serbia tried to explain that the achieved financial result in 2013 is largely due to, uh, is largely an accounting matter when it comes to recording of exchange rate gains and uh, losses and uh, due to change in securities composing foreign exchange reserves of the National Bank of Serbia. This uh, gain or loss is covered by uh, are by the profit generated by the National Bank of Serbia in the previous years, and this has no effect on the budget of the Republic of Serbia nor on the citizens of the Republic of Serbia. When it comes to your third question, uh, whether there is a possibility to prevent uh, uh, risky behavior of banks, uh, to my knowledge, uh, we are. Uh, there are some considerations currently of the proposal to assess the business model of each individual bank, and then based on that to uh, set the level of the insurance premium. So. This is something that is, um, has been adopted in some banks, and we are considering it. I exclude uh, the possibility. Uh, I don't exclude the possibility of considering this proposal um, in the near future. Alexander Koprivica, Associate Treasury, Treasury Solutions. I would like uh, to uh, ask you something about the lowering of the reserve requirement ratio. That is about the key policy rate. It's very hard uh, to strike a balance uh, in this regard. And um, uh, could you please tell me uh, what were the key reasons uh, behind uh, your lowering of the key policy rate in the current environment? So why uh, did you do that, especially given the current uh, exchange rate, uh, the current uh, instabilities, uh, um, especially in Ukraine, and uh, non-residents who invest in securities are very sensitive uh, 
in terms of uh, some conflicts, uh, exiting the dinar and so on. So what was the main factor? Was that domestic inflation? Uh, was that the projection of uh, international uh, developments, uh, um, uh, problems with inflation and deflation in the euro area and so on? So what, is what are the specific factors that uh, made the NBS to lower uh, the key policy rate? Uh, all measures uh, taken uh, by our central bank uh, aim at achieving uh, its statutory uh, objectives, uh, these being uh, price and financial stability of the country. Our motivation uh, for reducing uh, the key policy rate uh, is related to uh, disinflationary uh, factors present for some time already, as well as uh, temporary factors, such as the reduction in uh, primary agricultural product uh, prices we assume that inflation will move in the coming period below the lower bound of the target tolerance band, and this was uh, uh, our uh, main reason uh, behind the lowering of the key policy rate. In addition to the domestic circumstances, we also monitor uh, the developments uh, abroad, and uh, we can see that uh, uh, the euro area um, um, is displaying some pressure uh, because of uh, low import uh, prices. Uh, that we achieve with our main uh, foreign trade partner from the euro area, and this also reduces uh, inflation. And what is uh, happening at the same time is uh, depreciation. I have already said that depreciation does not jeopardize our main uh, objectives in ter objective in terms of price stability. We have ensured uh, normal functioning of the market, and we have ensured the, the stability of the system as well. Uh, the depreciation uh, part partly neutralizes um, uh, these inflationary effects uh, uh, emanating from the international environment. So, if there are no further questions, thank you for coming to the presentation of the inflation report. Goodbye.